So we got the Ducati Diablo V4 for about two weeks. Yeah, just over. So my question is, why did I only get it the day before we had to return it? Sorry about that. Okay, so the first thing we loved was the engine. I loved it, you loved it? Awesome, yeah. yeah. Gran Turismo V4, 1158cc's and 168 horsepower. Correct. 10,000 RPM. Yeah. And that's at the wheel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not at the engine. Yeah. How much torque? It's 126 Newton meters of torque at 7,500 RPM. Mm. And I found it really linear. It's a really linear torque curve, yeah. just keeps building. Yeah. Um, absolutely superb engine in this bike. Depending on what mode you're in though. Correct. So yes. it's got three different power modes and four different rider modes. So there's wet, yep. urban, touring and sport. For me, and I think you were probably the same, yes. touring was the mode that I left it in the whole time. But I, I don't know about you guys, but it was really noticeable how different those oh, yeah. modes were. Oh yeah. Yeah, sports mode was terrifying. Yeah. Wet mode was like pretty um, tame. So was urban. Yeah. Touring mode, perfect. Sports mode for me felt like it wanted to kill me. Mm. Uh, it was just like ready to take off full power. Now I think the power in sports mode is the full 168. I think if you put it in urban and wet mode, it drops the power to 115 horsepower which is still huge. Mm. It's still a massive amount of horsepower. And I was quite surprised because sitting in urban while I was in traffic, it was actually totally fine. Like for yeah. a Ducati as well, yeah. um, in sitting in traffic, it's normally not the most pleasant bike yeah. to be sitting in. I found it fine at low speeds, no problem. Really good handling at low speed. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and when you look at it, you think, well, you immediately assume it's going to be heavy, and yeah. you look at that yeah. massive rear tire, and you yeah. go, well, that's going to suck at low speed. Yeah. yeah. But it, yeah, it was really good. Yeah, Easy. great low speed handling, great um, low speed, like not a snatchy throttle. The fueling was spot on. Yeah. So the engine is part of the monocoque aluminium frame, so it's a stressed member, and that reduces the weight of the bike. Yeah. So the wet weight of the bike is 223 kilos, which I think is seriously light for a bike in this class. It felt light riding it and yeah. moving it even. Yeah, cruiser and 220 something kilos is not really what you're going to hear in this. We'll get to it, but is it really a cruiser? Mm, it's an Italian idea of a cruiser. <laughs> yeah, it is, isn't it? It's, it's, a, it's a funny thing. What about the suspension? I thought it was really good. I also found the suspension great. It's got 50 millimeter upside down forks that are fully adjustable. So I think it's got 120 mil travel in the front mm -hmm. and in the rear, it's got a single shock absorber with a separate piggyback reservoir. I know you love those piggyback reservoirs when they're real. Yes. Uh, and the rear's Definitely. got 145 mil of travel. So what do you guys think of the brakes? I thought they were spot on. They were good, very sharp in the front brakes, I thought. But with that kind of power, they need to be. How do yeah, you yeah. find the brakes? Well, as you said, they're sharp, but yeah. there's linearity in the lever. So 100%. it's not like it grabs, mm. yeah. it's not Nice and smooth. Yeah, definitely. So they're 330 mil twin discs on the front with Brembo style EMA calipers. Yep. You know they're going to be good and it's a single disc on the back. So let's talk about electronics. Now we've already gone through the rider modes and the power modes, but you like the menu. Yeah, I mean, I think the menu has a lot of finite adjustment. You can dial in the quick shifter, the wheelie control, the traction control, the ABS, the rider modes, but it's not overwhelming. I actually found myself pretty familiar with the menu after mm. an hour or so of riding and that was twiddling at the traffic lights. So. Mm. I think the menu's great. So I really liked the the graphics that came up when you'd go into a rider mode to adjust that rider mode and show you what was actually being adjusted mm. and affected. Yeah. Um, that was a really nice visual display of, of showing that. So yeah, really like that. As I said, I pretty much left it in touring mode, which gives you full power, mm. but it's a softer power delivery yeah. than sports mode. And the intervention of the traction and wheelie control is a bit more prevalent. Mm. Yep. So there is a heap of electronics. You've got ABS cornering, Ducati traction control, Ducati wheelie control, Ducati power launch, Ducati quick shift up and down, which was pretty smooth. Mm. Cruise control, electronics and rider modes are pretty much all customizable, which is a nice touch. You've got keyless pin function. So tell us about that. I didn't know about this. Oh What's yeah, the well, keyless pin? So if you're a real journalist and you look through the menus and you... you I can't read. We do. <laughs> oh, I see. You can opt to have a keyless function where you input a special pin and then your bike starts. Harley Davidson have been doing it for ages, but we're talking about real motorcycles here. So I like the bike so much, I thought what we could do is hand the keys back with the pin active and then sneak into the dealership <laughs> and steal it with the pin code. They did try to sell me one, so I didn't think of that. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. I have to remember that for next time. That's a $47,000 discount if you do it that way. <laughs> and a bit of time in jail. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what about the headlight? I thought the headlight looked great. I like when high beams value distance over breadth. 
Yeah, if that, that makes sense. That makes sense, yeah. Lots of reach and lots of visibility. Yeah, that looked great. Um, now, one thing that I found unusual for a Ducati was there was, I didn't notice any real heat coming from the engine. Mm. Having said that, we did ride it in the middle of winter. Yeah. But um, it was, even sitting in traffic, it was not a hot bike to ride. Yeah, disappointingly so. <laughs> So the weather protection was pretty good from the front. Um, I got caught in a little bit of rain one day when I was riding it. Absolutely no issue. Um, from, it was good. The, from the front, Ross, yeah. I, I couldn't help but notice. <laughs> yeah, what definitely about the back? The, okay, we'll get to that. Definitely it's good from the front. From the back, not so much. One thing I do like about Ducatis, and there's a few that have had it now, is those progressive indicators, the way they sort of just like flick across. Mm. I really like that look. Yeah. And what about that brake light? Okay, so I was gonna say, by far the <laughs> best electronic part of this bike, styling wise, is that brake light yep. that's yeah. tucked in under the seat. So Man, beautiful. That thing looks awesome. Yeah. 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 The other thing I really loved was those red LEDs that circle the switches. Yeah, like, absolutely. Oh God, it looks so good. Yeah. It looked good, but it's also very functional. Yeah. So at night you yep. can see where your buttons are. Now that's not something I expected from a Ducati, but mm. to have something that looks so good that was also functional. Yeah. yeah. It's a great idea. So we all agree that the quick shifter was great, right? Superb. Yeah. Beautiful. Loved it. And between first and second, where most bikes fail, this bike delivered. 100%. Every gear, every shift was pretty smooth. And the downshift felt so rewarding. Just mm. that constant rev range. It yeah. felt like one big long gear. Yeah. yeah. That comes back to the smoothness of the engine. Yeah. Uh, that beautiful V4 engine. It just, you know, the power delivery is so linear up and down through the gearbox and the quick shifter just fitted in perfectly. Yeah. And this is why they put the Gran Turismo engine in there. So they've got the Gran Turismo in this one as opposed to the Desmo Sedici V4. Because that's a bit more raw. Yeah, exactly. So the cruise control we love as well. It's easy to set, it's easy to operate, easy to adjust, and it's easy to see what speed you're doing as yeah. well. Yeah. So this is a bike that's sport but comfortable yeah mm. and I felt like you really sit in the bike not on the bike 790 mil seat height so it's not too tall when you see it it's a big looking bike yep. and then I sat on it and I was really shocked at how low it actually did sit yeah you sit you sit right in that bike yeah yeah, yeah so I really like that this is a behemoth of a bike mm. five mil shorter of a seat height compared to this tiny scrambler it's actually a shorter seat height than the wow. scrambler yeah okay this yeah. Type, this, I just realized that yeah no it is that is actually incredible but yeah. it just gives you I think that's why it gives you that great low speed handling as well oh yeah you are, for sure. you are sitting nice and low in the bike and a long wheelbase as well. Yeah, 100%. Now, did you carry pillion on this? No, I didn't get a chance to, and I was really excited to do it because of that funky grab <laughs> handle and the, the two... pull peg. The yeah, two, how cool is yeah. that? They look amazing, and yeah. the way they just like, they fold down, they just fold them back up. They look great when they're up. Mm. Um, I didn't carry pillion either, but you have them up and you go, oh, it's just a really nice, clean look to the back of the bike yeah. without any foot peg sitting there. Then fold them down if you want to throw a pillion on, yeah. great. And let's credit to Ducati, how often do you hear people say that the pillion pegs add to the look of a bike rather than take away? I don't think I've ever heard that. <laughs> yeah, no, they've done a really good job. We've covered electronics, we've covered the engine. By far, I think the thing that we all loved about this bike was the looks. Yeah. And I think it's a bit divisive. Some people don't like the look of this bike. We all loved it. Well, you can be wrong or you can like the look of it. <laughs> I think we need to start with that single-sided swing arm and that massive cast aluminium rim. It looks superb. Mm. Fantastic. And moving forward, you see the awesome quad-tipped single-out exhaust pipe. Looks good. Yeah. How cool is that? It yeah. looks big and mean. It looks like a like a jet fighter or something. It looks great. I love the big air intakes on the front as well. Yeah. Love the look of the front. I love the fact that the front of this bike looks just like the big 80s muscle bike. Yeah. yeah. But then you've got a really slick rear to the bike. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It's really kind of, it grows into it. So it kind of looks like a big buff. Yeah. It's like a bulldog. <laughs> I was thinking it's like a big buff transformer. Yeah. Like yeah. you can see <laughs> exactly how it it's like little legs and then it's got like this really big, beefy, muscly looking front end. Everything is so... It flows nicely, flow. the lines yeah, are good. Yeah, yeah. It's really beautiful. So the tank looks great. It's a really big centerpiece yeah. to the bike. It's also about a 20 litre tank. Yeah, yeah. Which um, you can probably burn through in 50Ks if you're on the red line. <laughs> In sports mode. In sports yeah. mode. But I yeah. actually found the, um, I think I found the fuel economy reasonably good in touring mode. Yeah, 6.7 litres per 100 according to the dashboard. And for a 1100cc V4, that's pretty bloody yeah, it's good. Not, not too bad. So this is a bike that looks good, mm. feels good to ride, it's comfortable, it handles well at low speed, but it handles well at high speed as Definitely. well. And yeah. it doesn't look like any other bike on the market. Yeah, it looks like nothing else out there. Okay, so having only ridden this bike twice, I don't know what the hell you guys are gonna put down for a thumbs down, so please, tell us. Can I just say, you need to stop harping on about that. <laughs> You'd be upset too. Okay, so the first thing I think we both found was the indicators, which was a little bit sensitive. Yeah, I mean, call it rider error if you must, and I know everyone will, but 
when you press in the indicator button to cancel, it would indicate right. Yeah. But it does have an automatic indicator cancel. Which function. I think we had turned off. Okay, so one of the things I didn't like was the cutout in the mirrors. They're a really, really odd shape. Mm. Yeah. I found I'm riding along, I can see a car in my mirror. They, the car then moves up into my blind spot and I can't see it out of my peripheral vision and then do a head check and it's sitting right there. Honestly, that cutout is terrible and I couldn't adjust them enough so it was showing my blind spot. So normally you can just dial the mirror up or down to find your blind spot, but on this bike, you just really didn't have the option because of that cutout. Mm, they're just a really not very well adjustable uh, mirror. Mm. But they look good. Now I really like the way that they've addressed the immobilizer button. When you turn the bike off, the immobilizer covers the starter button, which mm. is just very classy. But should the decals be the other way around? Yeah, I think so, mm. yeah. I must admit, the first time I jumped on a Ducati that had that, which was the Desert X, it confused the shit out of me. Yeah. So the rear suspension was good, but I did find it a little bit firm. It is adjustable though. Oh, I didn't find that at all. I didn't okay. find that either. But one thing that really bothers me on this bike was that it doesn't have adaptive cruise control. Like seriously, even the Moto Guzzi V100S Mandelo, and that's a Moto Guzzi, has adaptive cruise control. Mm. Why yeah. doesn't this have it? Yeah, and it's not like Ducati have never made an adaptive cruise control because they have it on the Multistrada. The, the brand new Multistrada RS, and yeah. I'm assuming the next version of the Diavel yeah. will have adaptive cruise control. So that was just a, a little thing for me. But for a bike that's a cruiser, yeah. I would have expected it to have adaptive cruise control. Cruiser control. 100%. Yeah. Mm. So it's a keyless bike, but you still need to use a key for the petrol tank yeah. and to pop the seat off. Yep. What's going on there? And if you want to put a pillion on the back, you have to pop the seat off to pull out the grab handle. Correct, unless you leave the grab handle out. And it's just weird, because for a bike in that price range, mm. is that really the best that they can offer? Mm. So the rear guard looks amazing, but doesn't do anything <laughs> if you get stuck in the wet. Well, it does do something. You it gets you wet. your whole back in water. <laughs> yeah, it looks great, but man, just don't ride this bike in the wet. Okay, so uh, Lucas, I'm not going to ask you, Tegan, where you wrote it, because you wrote it to work. Lucas, where'd you ride it? Oh, I had a I had a mixed bag of riding on this bike, commuting, heavy traffic, city, suburban, doing the shopping with a backpack on, uh, National Park, of course, and I think it excelled in every single category, except maybe lane filtering sometimes, because it's a bit wide. Yeah, I mean, it, like the stability lane filtering is fine, it's just, yeah. that, just that width, because yeah. the front of it's nice and wide, although, um, when you are lane filtering, you know if you get the front of the bike through, you know you're right with the back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's true. Well, I will say, excuse me, I did get to take it on a couple of roads. So yes, I got to take it in heavy traffic and I was really surprised at how well it did move and just that weight, that handling was so good in yeah. heavy traffic. And I did then take it on a freeway, so I was hitting about 90, 100 Ks and it was so comfortable um, using that cruise control, yeah. um, sitting in touring mode. It was a really, really enjoyable bike. That power was there when I needed to get around big vehicles. And I just had such a ball and was so disappointed when I only got to have it for that one day. <laughs> so riding it just that short amount of time, what would you what would you score it? Oof, I would- Did it make you smile, Tegan? It absolutely did. And when I got off it that first night coming home from work, I was so upset that I didn't have more time on it, but I would sort of put it in the same category as the M1000R. Which is a great bike, yeah. And that was a great bike, but well, I will say in the same price range, that M1000 had more tech. Yeah. Yeah, I just think for a bike in this range, if it's technically a cruiser, I would expect it to already have like heated grips, heated seat, have the cruise control that's adaptive. I would just expect a little bit more for a cruiser. Um, being a, if it was a sports bike, I would have accepted that as is. So I would probably rank that a little lower. I'd probably say about eight and a half. Yeah, so what about you, Lucas? Well, I really, really, really liked this bike. Mm. I, I think it's a very unique and strange kind of dual bike that makes you happy and it's fun to ride. And you know when you park a bike and then you walk away and you look back at it and you're like, yeah. <laughs> yep. I, I'm giving it a nine out of 10. It's very surprising you, there's a Ducati that you did like. That's unusual. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who would have thought? <laughs> okay, and for me, I uh, I took it on a like a couple of big rides, uh, Mac Pass, Chamber Mountain Road. Must Went on nice. some roads that I didn't know, which was really cool. And about 350 kilometers later, mm -hmm. I was in love. I love this bike. I, love, I mostly love the looks, so they look great, but I love the fact that it looks like nothing else on the market. Yeah. Mm. But I don't know where it sits. What's the competition for this bike? I don't know, maybe the MT-10? 
or yeah maybe but that's like, like a, a much smaller bike is it a sports bike is it a muscle bike is it part dragster is it a cruiser <laughs> I, I, yeah it's, it's yeah. kind of where does it fit one thing i will say is it is 100 percent ducati cool yeah but but one other question what i thought i was thinking is how is it different from the street fighter v4 yeah well this is what i wanted to touch on so if we go back to the first street fighter that was based on the 1098 it was more upright and, in my opinion, more Diabolish than the new Street Fighter. Okay. Now we come to the Panigale Street Fighter V4. That has the Desmo Sedici V4, which is a more stripped back, bare bones, powerful racing engine. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the critical difference. Desmo Sedici V4 versus Gran Turismo V4. So that's smoother. Yeah, it's smoother. It's got longer service intervals from memory. It's a and better it's, touring option. Yeah, yeah, and it's geared for the low end as well. Okay. The new Street Fighter V4 is much more sporting and much closer to the Panigale than the original Street Fighter was to the 1098. Okay. So for me, it makes this bike a great touring option, mm. apart from that rear guard. Um, there's heaps of power, it's comfortable. It's probably the best Ducati I've ever ridden. Wow. And I'm giving it a nine and a half. Hang on, didn't you ride my bike? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> So we have no idea what category this bike is in, and because of that, we have no idea what video to recommend next. So let's hand it over to YouTube and click on these links over here to watch whatever comes next.